Okay, what have we got on this table today? Ewoks day? Okay, there is a lot of bread on this table today. A lot of bread. So we will be doing something with bread because it just upsets me really, the amount of bread waste that we've got in this country, especially with the plastic packaging. And stir fry. Quite often when you get these packets, it's a good idea to have a really good look. Some of it looks a bit slimy. It's a bit past its best. The only thing I would do with that really to be safe is to put it in a big soup, but I want to do something much more exciting than a soup. Right, but what we have got is some stuffing and some posh, posh supermarket stuffing, which is mainly breadcrumb, butter and onion based. You know, this is this actually could be the base, almost like a uh, like a mincemeat to do something like a chili or a lasagna or a spaghetti bolognese. When I make a spaghetti bolognese, I do like to have carrots and I can see on the table here, there are some really nothing wrong with them, maybe slightly wonky, a little bit brown on the outside. We'll scrape that off, we'll grate those into the mix. That'll be fantastic. All the vegetables will be wild. So we'll get all the rest of the veg in the hedgerow today. We'll take the baps, because who doesn't like garlic bread on the side of a spaghetti bolognese or a lasagna? And because I have children and they're gonna want a sweet treat after all of that, we are gonna pinch some sweeties. And now we've gotta go and get our wild ingredients. Okay, so definitely with a spag bolt, um, we're gonna need some allium, some sort of onion, some sort of garlic. And right by this beautiful tree, you've got essentially your garlic and onion aisle, your supermarket aisle. So you definitely don't want to go for anything that looks like it might have been weed on by an animal. And this is a really good indication. You know, if you've got any yellowing or browning marks on leaves, it's usually the case that a dog, passing dog, is, has done a weed. So we're looking for any leaves which haven't got that browning or that yellowing stain. Garlic mustard is going to be on the garlic bread. That's going to be uh, cut up really finely, either with a little bit of uh, olive oil or a little bit of butter or marge, depending on what I've got currently in the fridge. This here is three quarters cornered garlic or three cornered leek. These were all spoken about in our previous series, but that is going to form the onion base. Just a handful is plenty. Never take more than you need. And we do have cow parsley here. That's a bit more of a, an advanced foraging ingredient, but whilst I see it, that's also going to give me a really nice, almost, almost aniseed back note as a herb in the bolognese itself. So here, beautiful wild onions. And what you find in ancient meadows are ancient foods and ancient food culture. You know, our ancestors wouldn't have been going into co-op and buying bags of onions in plastic bags. They would have been out looking for wild alliums. And they're a great way to flavor any dish, any dish that you make. You know, you're looking for what looks like long circular pieces of grass, but actually they are individual onions. They are in abundance at this time of year. So they are going in my basket. Oh, look at this. Absolutely beautiful patch of sorrel. You see, you just want to make sure all your leaves are sorrel. That lovely fork at the back pointing down towards the stem. Snip those off. That is our side salad. As easy as that in one fell snip. Ah, primroses, primrose leaves, young, lovely, iron rich, vitamin C rich primrose leaves. You know, and you put in all these fantastic nutrients. It's not just about bulking out your dinner, not just about, you know, making it go far, stretching it for a family. It's about putting the nutrients that our body, especially in the winter, is craving. Even though we are in the depth of winter, and I mean, we really are in January, everything is windy and rainy and horrible. We have something that just gives me hope, really. Hope that light things are gonna happen again, better things are to come. These beautiful cherry blossoms that are just stunning. You know, there's, this tree isn't even in leaf and we've got these little blossoms. Now I'm certainly not gonna take all of them because that would just be a shame for everyone else who would come past this beautiful tree. But what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna take four buds just to finish the dish and garnish the dish to remind me that hope is out there, things are going to get better, and that's just going to make everything that I make today Instagrammable and fantastic. So 
So here we are then, back in the dry space. We've been in the hedgerow, we've been to Cafe Abundance, and we need to put together our spaghetti bolognese. So we've got to chop our alliums first. That's the first job. What alliums did we get in the graveyard? First of all, I'm going to use the three cornered leek. Three cornered leeks are so amazing at this time of year because they're literally in every park. They're on every hedge. If you go for a nice walk and you find a countryside path and you start to smell onions, it's normally three cornered garlic that you can smell. For me, it's, it's better than any wild other wild garlic like ramsons. And again, ramsons don't come out till the spring. It's January, it's winter, and this is the peak time for your three cornered garlic. So I'm just gonna rough chop the three cornered garlic like you would a white or a red onion for the base of your spag bowl. Spag bowl bases, what do we normally use? We normally use a shop-bought garlic clove and one onion. We don't need to do that with the three-cornered garlic because it's oniony and garlicky all in one. So let's get our pan on, get some heat on the pan. Now, store cupboard ingredients. Let's just, whilst the pan is heating, let's just take you through very quickly what I already had in the cupboard. Oil, really cheap, really basic. This is a rapeseed oil. Nothing fancy, I had that in the cupboard. If you've got olive oil, even better really, but I didn't have any. I'm all out of nice olive oil. Always in my cupboard, always are some really cheap, basic tin tomatoes. They work with so many dishes. So they're about, well, they used to be about 10p a tin. They're probably now more about 30p a tin, but you can certainly hopefully put together 30p to buy some of those really really cheap really basic spaghetti the reason why I always have cheap basic spaghetti my children love it they will eat spaghetti till the cows come home even if you just sprinkle some cheese on the top pans getting nice and hot tomato puree that's a good little base for the spag bowl mix now I've got a seed mix here seeds are great if you're trying to make a mince meat but you haven't got money for meat and you don't want to use packet processed vegan or vegetarian alternatives. Now that could be anything from soy mints, um, it could be the sunflower minces that you get. Um, what I'm going to do, or what I have done, is I've put some sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds in my pestle and mortar, I've ground them up, and that's going to be added, if you remember when we were down at the Cafe Abundance table, to this odd pre-packaged supermarket stuffing mix. Okay, so stuffing, not just for balls on the side of roast dinner, this is going to be the base of our spag bowl. Makes more sense when I'm putting it together. Pan's getting nice and hot. Little splash of oil in the pan. Okay, and in goes, you can see it's winter because my breath is cold in this room. Okay, in go our lovely free onion and garlic. Now these do not take as long to color as a traditional onion that you might be used to cooking with. So keep an eye on the pan, keep it moving. You don't want them to burn, you just want them to color and soften. And they wilt down so quickly. So you think you've got a really big bushel and then you look down in the pan and it's like spinach. Any greens that you heat will wilt quite quickly. So make sure when you're out gathering, only pick as much as you need, but make sure you have enough. Okay, put a few more in. There's nothing better than the smell of onions and oil. Instantly delicious. Okay, into that mix, we want our next ingredient. Remember our scabby carrot? Our scabby wonky... I don't like to take the skin off carrots. Most of the nutrients in a vegetable are located in the skin. But this carrot had a little bit of unwanted black on some of its sides, so just scrape that away. The rest of the carrot is perfectly fine. Right, just gonna put some slithers of carrot in the pan. You could grate it in. I don't have my grater with me, so I'm just gonna slice it in. Making sure you're still turning those greens around. Nice. Right, in now with this strange stuffing mix. Now this had obviously been frozen before it had gone onto that table. So we might have to break it up a bit in the pan with our spatula. OK. 
Okay. And already that's starting to look like a packet of dry mints that you might buy in place of meat. Now, just to stop it catching on the pan, I'm gonna have a splash of water. And then I'm gonna put in my ground sunflower and pumpkin seeds. And that's just gonna bulk out that mixture and give it a bit of a crunch. You know, you don't just want a soggy mess. In with my cheap tomatoes. I love doing spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese is so quick. And people always say to me, you know, oh, we haven't got time to forage. We're too busy working. When do we have time to go and pick these baskets of wild food? The basket of wild food took me five minutes, less than five minutes to pick today. You know, it's just, Sometimes you just got to give yourself a bit of credit. You've all got brains. You're all, you're all creative, really. All you need is around you. All right, now a bit of tomato puree. Give a good squeeze. Oh, so, you've got to be careful with these. Sometimes you get a good skush into the face if you're not careful, they could pop. Has happened before. Okay. Mm. Smelling good. Now, already in that packaged stuffing mix, there was a lot of seasoning. There was sage, I think there was some marjoram. I'm gonna put in some of our cow parsley, our fresh cow parsley. I'm gonna snip that straight in to the bowl. A bit more water. Because this is a stuffing mix and it's got breadcrumbs in it, it's getting quite thick quite quickly. So if that happens, just keep it loose. More tomatoes or a bit more water. Cow parsley. Oh, it's delicious. It just, as you cut this, it just smells so great. As I said, cow parsley is an advanced forager's herb. You can get it wrong. It can look like something almost fatal. So please, please do check back in previous videos and do always only harvest wild foods that you know and that you're confident with. Don't just rush out and start putting things in you don't know. And if you want to learn more, you can come on any of our courses for free, absolutely free, if you are low in no income. So if you want to learn more about this and see what these herbs look like in the wild, then just send us an email, book on one of our courses and get to know these plants really well. And then you are honestly, this will, this will sort you out for life. This is free food, which is yours as birthright. A few of these two just snipped into this mixture I really like onions, and this is another wild onion. Snip some into there. Okay. Yummy. All right, I'm gonna just turn the heat off whilst I put in the rest of my greens. Primrose leaves. I like spinach, they will wilt but I want these to not be quite as mixed in like, like the other greens. The other greens are almost really melted into that mixture now. I want these to stand out. So we're gonna put them in now. Primroses, not many people know primroses are edible, the leaves and the flowers. Don't obviously take loads and loads because we like to see the flowers popping up in the spring, but taking a few leaves here, spaghetti bolognese for your family. In these times of hardship, it's not gonna get you into any trouble. I'm gonna put in a tiny bit more salt, because although that pre-packaged stuffing was already seasoned, we have bulked out the dish. So this is just a bit of sea salt going in. You could use any salt, table salt. It's fine if that's all you've got. So that's just gonna cool slightly. Before we do our side dish, we're gonna just put this garlic mustard, our little horseshoe garlic mustard leaf. Oh. Garlic mustard's amazing. There's another one that does what it says on the tin. So, I'm gonna chop that into a little, this little cup, just nice and small. And what you need to do is preheat your oven. So if you're at home, just put your oven on, not too high a heat, because you're gonna heat these rolls up and make them into lovely garlic bread. 
So I don't have any butter, I'm all out of butter. I'm gonna use a little bit of oil, pop that in. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of honey. Now if you're vegan and you don't eat honey, you could put a little bit of sugar in. You could leave the sugar out, it's entirely up to you. The reason why I put a bit of sweetener into this is because garlic mustard can be bitter. And what you don't wanna do is put people off, especially children, to wild food. Because if you eat one thing once and you think, oh, I don't like it, you're less inclined to go in for it again. So try to just use the bottom of that spoon a minute. And I think as well, I'll put a pinch of salt in that mixture before I spread it onto the bread rolls. Okay. Fresh sorrel salad. Mm-hmm. Let's get me a plate. It's probably enough, too much for one person. I'm such a greedy person that I would probably have three times the amount of that on my one, <laughs> my one plate, but let's just be sensible. Right. Oh. Salad on there. Let's finish the bread rolls before we get carried away with dressing that salad with a very simple salad dressing. Right, so push, push my compost to one side. Right, our slightly out of date bread rolls. With bread rolls, I think the trick is if you give them a squeeze and they bounce back, you're okay. If you give them a squeeze and they are rock hard, or if you give them a squeeze and they don't bounce back, then I wouldn't use them for nice garlic bread like this. But these look really good. And there's no marks and there's no obvious signs of mold. And let's cut it open and just double check before you start serving things to family. Absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong at all with that bread roll. And remember, we're gonna be putting them in the oven. So we're gonna be making them even more definitely safe to consume. So I'm just cutting those open. They're gonna go in the oven on a baking dish, but before they go in the oven, we are gonna be smothering them in that garlic oil. Make sure it's covered nicely. Right, let's put those behind me ready for the oven. Now let's dress up this little salad before I go and get the spaghetti. The spaghetti I put on before we started filming, so that would be nicely cooked now, I would hope. Now, quite often when I come to the cupboard, there is nothing left in it and I need a salad dressing. And always in my cupboard, always, I have some kind of vinegar. This was a jar of pickled onions that I devoured, but I didn't want to throw the bit of vinegar away. And the sell-by date of this is October last year. A lot of people ask me if vinegar can spoil. Vinegar never, ever goes off, like honey. Honey will never go off, vinegar will never go off. It lasts indefinitely. A few things might happen, okay? You don't have to keep it in the fridge. Sometimes vinegar will go cloudy, perfectly normal, okay? There is nothing wrong with that. If it's gone cloudy, it's still fine. It might start to deteriorate slightly in its flavor or change its flavor, but it is still perfectly edible to consume. The other thing that might happen is you might get a type of scoby, the mother of the vinegar, which looks like a gel or a little jellyfish in the bottom. That is also completely natural, okay? There is nothing wrong with that. You can use that to make another vinegar, or you can just put it in the compost, it's fine. But this vinegar is brilliant for salad dressing. So if I've got nothing else and I've only got vinegar, Vinegar is a great, especially malt vinegar. I love malt vinegar. And then I like to put a tiny bit of salt, a bit more salt, just sprinkle, not much, okay, on there. And if I had runny honey, I would put a bit of runny honey too, but I don't think we need it. So, okay, I'm just gonna go and get the spaghetti. A bolognese. Okay, so our lovely wild garlic bread is ready. I'm gonna put a slice on there. And bon appetit. There you have your very odd, oddly created, saved from waste supermarket food with hedgerow ingredients. It's a wild spaghetti bolognese. Bon appetit.